All right, guys. Haven't done a video in a little while. Been real busy. Got a little bit of time here. As long as we don't get rained out, it's calling for thunderstorms. But this is my septic tank. Um, get a lot of babbling out of the way. Um, where I live, not that this really matters with anything with what I'm doing. We have um, septic tanks. The I can't remember what the date was, but prior to a certain date, septic tanks were only one compartment. And what that means is, here's coming from my house. Pipe comes in. It's down inside here, and all the solids, you know, everything that you flush, comes in, and it's all just kind of floating around inside there. So. The newer style tanks have a two compartment and there's a partition right about there. <clears throat> so all the solids come in, there's a baffle in the middle in that wall. And what that does is it stops all the solids and it's a settling area. Anything that's going to sink will sink. Anything that's going to float will float. And theoretically clear water gray water meaning water that doesn't have any major size particulate in it can make its way through the baffle into this partition and then there's another baffle and it goes on out and into your drain field <clears throat> now about three years ago my drain field failed and we had water coming up over here and it was all wet along here but the big thing was we kept backing up inside the tank I have an outlet filter in here, and we'll see that soon enough um, with an alarm on there. So when the filter gets clogged or if the drain fields are backing up and the water's backing up, the alarm goes off. I know to come out and pop this lid and check it and uh, either clean the filter or see what's going on. I put that in when I replaced the drain field. My new drain field is down in that lower end of my front yard. And this is a valve here. I have a tool made up. You screw that cap off and you stick it on there and you turn it and it diverts the fluid from the old drain field to the new drain field. And um, current standards around here and what I'm taught at the classes that I go to is that when you have a failing system, that most systems, when you put this valve in and divert it to your new field, you can let it sit Different places have different specs. Um, what I like to do is five years. But anyhow, they say when you leave the old system rest, that in that period of time, the old system will recuperate itself to within 80 to 90% of its original capacity. So three years ago, I put the new field in. I am currently on the new field. So in about two years, we'll switch the valve over from the new field to my old field. And um, we'll run it that way for a while and we'll flip flop back and forth. Theoretically, this should be indefinite. Um, so, but nonetheless, the problem I'm having here is there is a condition called hydrogen sulfide. I believe I said that correctly. Um, it's very common in the concrete industry <clears throat> with uh, septic tanks and it's a acidic air basically if you take the lid off my tank and pump it down everything below the liquid level looks like a brand new tank everything above the liquid level the concrete is deteriorating that is due to uh, undigested solids going into the tank and it's creating this acid in the air of the decomposing food particles and it's eating my tank away so what I'm doing is I'm going to dig up this area right here in between these risers all the way down to my tank. The tank's about two and a half, almost three feet deep. Then I have these blocks of styrofoam I'm going to stack up, set on top of the tank to within about 18 inches of grade. And that'll help take off some of the dirt load on top of the tank in the event that it should... Uh, get weak enough that it may want to cave in. Also in the process, while it's dug open, I have some miscellaneous fittings and things there. These risers are plastic. I'm gonna cut a hole, there's flat sides on them. 
I'm gonna cut a hole and run a line from each one to a T in the middle that'll come up and I'll perforate that cap. This guy will sit on there like that and that's gonna be a vent and that hopefully um, will ventilate any of them uh, acidic air that's in there um, because it's, it's due to too many solids going down the drain. We don't have a food, uh, what do you call it, not a food processor, uh, garbage disposal. Because those things are bad for drain fields and septic systems because people tend to just clean their plates off and everything goes down the drain. Um, but it's also poor ventilation. So I'm going to put a vent in there and hopefully um, slow at best the process of hydrogen sulfide in my septic tank. Um, I've done a bunch of updates to this when I when I did the drain field, so I don't know if there will be anything in there where you can see uh, as an example of what this hydrogen sulfide looks like, what it's doing to concrete. So I'm not going to film the whole process. I'll turn the camera on and post up different steps. All right. To those of you that stay tuned after six minutes of babbling my hat's off to you you're better than i am because i don't have the patience for all that anyhow it's hard to see the bottom of the tank but that's it i mean the top bottom of the hole top of the tank because it's all stained up um same color as the dirt so there's my wire for the float uh the alarm switch that's inside the tank for my filter I got a little nick in it. I need to repair that. Level up the bottom just a little bit. And we're going to take that styrofoam and section it up and try to get try to get two feet out of it. Um, I don't know if I'll get that much. And then backfill around that in the pipe, get up to where I need to be, and then we'll clean off the risers for my uh, uh, hook the vents up. So I didn't mention before, um, in case you're wondering, this is a 1200, 1250 gallon tank. And this tank was in here with the original system. Like I say, I did a uh, replacement drain field. I didn't replace the whole septic. I just cleaned the top of the tank off, put the risers on, sealed them up. The filter's been in there for a while, but I replaced the filter because I got a whole new pipe penetration in the tank when I did it. Um, and then I ran down to the new drain field at the bottom. Um, so the tank was existing and it is, it was built in 89. So she's pretty old. We got a good bit of use out of it. Like I say, it made it from 89 to 2013. So, and I think I said I did it three years ago. My math, I apologize. It was four years ago. So, and just FYI, I, uh, anytime I mention I want my own backhoe, because if anybody watched my videos knows I work for an excavating company, and it's actually a family business, it takes a major act of Congress to get a backhoe out here anytime I need one. It's always too far away, we need it, you can have it, but we gotta have it right back, so here we go. This is why I want my own backhoe. Okay, there's the styrofoam in place. Made my wire repairs, got heat shrink on it. Luckily it was only one. And uh, lucky I found it because it was an old, an old nick. The wire was all green on the inside, but there's my styrofoam cut up. So I got about 16 inches. So I would say a big slug of dirt like that, that probably takes about 300 pounds or more off the top of my tank not including what little bit of space the fittings in the pipe are going to take up when I connect them from this riser to this riser and what that'll do is it'll allow air to pass I mean it's all one big tank but either way it'll help air flow into and out of the tank and fumes vent out of it or whatever and if I happen to get a smell um, they make charcoal filters it's about 60 bucks and it'll plug right on a piece of pipe. There'll be a piece of pipe sticking straight up out of the ground here. And uh, I can put a charcoal filter on there to kill any odors. So 
moving on. So there's a rough layout. This guy here will be sticking up like that. There'll be a vertical pipe come out above grade. And there's the there's the flat spots. I'm gonna cut that out. It's the morning blue thing, but cut that uh, blank out and then I have these gaskets that they're for uh, plastic distribution boxes for a drain field. So I'll cut, trim the hole out, snap them in, and then it's got a lip you stick your pipe through, and that'll seal it up. We don't have a moisture problem here, but that'll seal the pipes up. Okay, there's the finished product. Here's the, the two ends are connected. I don't know that it really needed both ends, but I just figured it's a four inch pipe that'll handle certainly enough air. There's the penetration where it comes through my uh, plastic riser. There's the other blue blue ring down there. There he is there. And uh, I'll show you here. See how you can see the granules of the con concrete there? That shouldn't look like that. That should be smooth, finished concrete. And you can just make out a little crack there, a little crack there. There's another one right there. Um, and when I had the top dug open, there's some spider cracking in there as well. Now, granted, the tank is, you know, it lids four inches thick when it's got either rebar or uh, concrete wire in there. But uh, nonetheless, there's the top of my filter. And there's my float when that comes up it's like a sump pump that float will come up and it will activate the circuit and an alarm inside the house will go off so we're going to take and uh paint that bad boy green so it blends in a little bit i'm gonna perforate that cap so it'll flow air and keep varmint out of there everything's primed and glued except for the 90 on top that will um keep that open just so in case i want to lower it raise it turn it whatever servicing so there you go any questions post it in the comments i'll do my best to answer you